Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening uh, from wherever you're tuning in from, and welcome, Patty members, to this year's Member Social. I'm Kristen Vallette Worth. I am your Chief Brand and Membership Officer, and I am joined here with uh, Drew Richardson, uh, Patty's President and CEO. Thanks, Kristen, and hello, Patty members. It's a pleasure to be here with you right now. So we're going to jump straight into this, and uh, Drew, I'm going to ask you a few questions so that you can share your thoughts with the PADI membership. And the first one is just, this has been a real unusual time, right, in quite a year. And wanted to get your perspective on just PADI's philosophy and a bit more about your vision for the future. Well, thanks, Kristen. Look, uh, there's no doubt the last 20 months have been difficult for everybody, an unprecedented time for humanity. The um, last one was 102 years ago, so we're kind of chopping through this together and I think overall the dive industry and Patty Pros in particular have done a great job. We just did a survey recently and uh, indicated that a lot of you folks are in recovery. Some of you are still struggling through uh, the geography that you reside in, but the hope is there and the action is there and I'd, I'd like to take a few minutes in this interview maybe to speak about that. So we're all about membership diversity. If you think about PADI as a diaspora across the planet, uh, our divers, our pros, our resorts, our retailers go cross cultures, go cross borders and have shown this resilience which gives us a great platform to scale off of for some of the good things we want to do. We're going to be investing more heavily in the sport of uh, scuba diving and exploration of the undersea in the months ahead of us. Um, we're going to try to help grow your business as we have the last several months through direct communication, through our field services staff and our great employee base. Um, I'm going to continue my writings to you through straight talk and blogging in the months ahead. And the whole goal here is to aggregate this one billion torchbearer uh, community across the planet with um, people who want to explore the ocean firstly and then start thinking about caring for it. Thanks, Drew. Really appreciate that. And, you know, something that you said there that really keyed in is the torchbearers. And we're trying to build this community of a billion torchbearers to uh, protect and explore the ocean. And underneath that, we have our pillars for change. And I'm wondering if you can just share with the PADI members a little bit about those three pillars and, and really what they stand for. Yeah, that's, that's great. Look, uh, the torchbearer mission, if you uh, just recall it, it's a big audacious statement um, that we made after the 50th anniversary and that's really to aggregate a billion souls on the planet to firstly explore, all of us have explorer in our blood and invite others to join us and enable that and then care for the ocean. Underneath our mission is our vision which is to create this balance between humanity and the ocean. So we're working hard to do that and we've organized that through what we call the pillars of change. Uh, they include ocean conservation, they include dive industry sustainability, and they include people and humanity. And uh, we'll address some of that in our discussion today, but uh, those are three things that everything else rolls out of in terms of what our focus points are, how we elevate the PADI community through our pros, resorts, and retailers to help execute and scale. It's all about scale in the years ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of organizations really talk about their, you know, um, desire to do something good for the world. And, you know, certainly Patty's desire here to do good for oceans and the conservation aspect of that. Uh, but we do a lot more than talk, don't we? We actually put a blueprint for ocean action into place. And I think that's what's so unique. Uh, we launched that this year and I uh, thought maybe it would be good for you to talk a little bit about our blueprint for ocean action and just what that entails. Yep. Sure, Kristen. Um, look, we've talked a little bit, spoken a little bit about the mission and the vision for the organization and then the three pillars that everything rolls out of. The blueprint is where the rubber meets the road about scale. We want to do everything we can to scale. Well, that starts with attracting new divers um, with our global infrastructure of dive centers, resorts, and members, and sending them to your thresholds, and then teaching them to dive safely and enabling their exploration, and then start thinking about scaling this blueprint. So the blueprint is really five buckets. Uh, the first one, and it's uh, in cooperation with some partners we'll talk about and also with Patty Ware Foundations doing some good work there uh, that we'll speak about a little bit later. But the first one's ridding the ocean of marine debris, which is 
Almost sounds like that's impossible, but it is possible. We'll explain more how we're going to do that through partnerships and through your actions locally across the planet. When it all rolls up, it'll be to scale. Very important. The second one is multiplying the numbers of marine protected areas out there. Now, many of you are engaged with MPAs. Some of you are engaged with Hope Spots, and some of you have adopted dive sites across the planet. We want to scale that too. More set-asides, um, and through partnering, which we'll speak more about here in a few minutes, we're going to be able to scale that in a new and different way so that we can protect the reefs and dive sites that we love and the animals and uh, fishes that live amongst them. So that's the second one. <clears throat> the third one is about protecting um, basically endangered and vulnerable species. Uh, many of the animals that divers crave to see, uh, many of the animals that you personally crave or feel protective of need our advocacy. And with that billion torchbearer mission, we're gonna need a lot of help to aggregate other like thinking people in positions of influence to help set aside some protection for apex predators um, all the way down to uh, many other creatures that are threatened uh, by today's world. So that's the third bucket. The fourth one is about acceleration of coral reef recovery. That's important as well. Tropical marine ecosystems, sort of the, the uh, quintessential dive site, if you will, on coral reefs around the planet. We all know they're threatened. Uh, we want to look at some scale in projects to actually demonstrate through regenerative tourism and also through some projects that we have in the place to uh, show how we can help them recover and uh, replace them, if you will, over time uh, with vibrant reefs. And then the last one is reducing, doing our uh, part as a community, reducing the uh, carbon offset for the dive industry. So we've got partners in all of these buckets. Uh, we're collecting more. Um, we can talk about the partners here in a second if you want to, Kristen. Um, kind of explain a little bit more there too. Thank you, Drew. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's interesting. You've teased out you know, the concept of partnership. And I know that you know, you've talked to the members in the past about being stronger together, right? And a lot of times we mean that as a community of, of divers and dive professionals. And in this case, we're talking about being stronger together by collaborating with really amazing partners to actually get more ocean conservation action done. So maybe since you've brought that up, we can talk to the members. In fact, I think you even have an announcement here to make about one of our newest partner partners, but talk to them about who the partners are, where we're headed with them, and, and maybe what they bring to the table as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, we are stronger together and we need help from like-minded people and institutions and organizations around the planet to get to our aspirational mission and vision together. So first I'll speak about why partners are attracted to PADI, and it's really you. Uh, we have a global infrastructure, 6,600 resorts and retailers around the planet who deal in their local communities with local nationals in those communities, and the majority of you also entertain tourism, dive tourism, to bring people into the countries that you reside in. That's massive, and around that we have all these divers, uh, 28 million strong, that we're able to um, I say hearten and put into action. Everybody speaks about hope. Some people think things are hopeless. We do not. We, we center around the concept of positivity and we find partners who believe in that as well, but they're looking to defragment uh, their good, uh, uh, basically the goodwill that's established through many NGOs and whatever. And we can help with that with our infrastructure. So they come to us thinking that, well, maybe Patty's members, resorts, and professionals can help scale some of their good work. So that's a logical uh, marriage, if you will, between partners. Uh, when you talk about ridding the ocean of plastics or marine debris, we're talking about the ocean cleanup. And the ocean cleanup, um, if you're familiar with their work, they've identified a thousand rivers around the planet. Uh, they're putting interceptors in those rivers. Those are the rivers that are made the major inflow of marine debris and plastics. And trying to intercept that and then upcycle it and also working on the uh, uh, jeers out in the ocean as well with the plastics aggregating, marine debris aggregating. The Ocean Cleanup are a great partner. They love the fact we have this infrastructure with our members, local divers that can rally and do some census taking under the sea with uh, Dive Against Debris and other good things like that. Um, and they're very open-minded 
uh, like-minded people. So that's one partnership in the, in the ocean cleanup, for example. Yeah, that's really exciting. And to see, you know, such an amazing organization like the Ocean Cleanup that uh, is so innovative and, and scale, like you said, you brought that up, and how Patty can actually bring to that partnership the scale of the underwater, you know, monitoring of the marine debris. In fact, their CEO, uh, Boyan Slat, uh, has, uh, he's very personally excited about this partnership, was recently diving in the Dominican Republic and has a few words for us to see right here. So we're very happy now that we have this, this partnership with, with Patty, uh, which will really help us gather more data about the plastic problem, because that's really what our entire strategy is based on. We first have to understand the problem in order to solve it. So with the Patty partnership, we'll be collecting surveys from, uh, of the amount of plastic on the seabed, in rivers, uh, coastlines, and just in the, the water surface to get to better quantify the distribution of plastic around the world, which will help us to determine where we place our interceptors, where we deploy our cleanup machines. Um, so yeah, we're very excited to, uh, for the Ocean Cleanup to work together with Ben. Well, that was really inspiring from Boyan. That's really great. Drew, if we transition then into the second, where we're talking about our marine protected areas and the 30% protection of the ocean by 2030, can you talk to us a little bit about our newest partner with that one? Yeah, sure. Sure. Happy to announce it here uh, today in our discussion. The 10 year period um, we look at as the roaring 20s for the oceans. If you think about Post-pandemic, 102 years ago, uh, a period of the Roaring Twenties came along. It's controversial, but it's fondly remembered usually. So we're thinking about 10 years. Uh, time is important here. Try and do something good and uh, think more about exploring and preserving the ocean. So the second partner we're really pleased to speak about here today are the National Geographic Pristine Seas people, uh, Dr. Enrique Sala and the crew there are very excited to work with Patty and you uh, across the planet to gather information to make a economic justification for preserving dive tourism, regenerative tourism, and diving spots rather than overly harvest in an unsustainable way. So we're going to need your help on that one. Surveys, uh, if you haven't filled it out yet, uh, will be coming your way, so please do. Uh, and that's a great partner. And so they're all about MPAs. They've been in that space a long time. They have the scale. They've got the uh, academic and institutional uh, horsepower that we're looking for to partner with, and they're excited about working with Patty and, and our infrastructure globally. They sure are. In fact, Dr. Enrique Sala, uh, the founder of National Geographic Pristine Seas, uh, actually sent us a little soundbite that he wanted us to share with the Patty membership. So let's have a quick listen to that. Dear Patty friends, dive centers from all around the world. My name is Enrique Sala. I am National Geographic Explorer in Residence and Director of Pristine Seas. I am very excited to partner with Paddy to help and support all of you to protect the dive sites around the world where you work. Only together we can help protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. Wow, that is really an exciting partnership, Drew, and very exciting for the membership indeed. Now, let's talk about our third partner here. Uh, I know this is uh, something that's near and dear to your heart, uh, these two individuals who formed Sea Legacy and you know their involvement in not just the marine protected areas bucket, but also just really raising the awareness of our actual mission of a billion torchbearers. Can, can you share with the PADI members a bit about them? Oh, absolutely. I, I think most members would be familiar with Paul Nicklin and Dr. Christina Mittenmeyer. Um, they're rock stars. Uh, you've seen their imagery, their passion for the sea, and as it turns out, they have, uh, big audience that follow them, but their mission and our mission together entirely aligned. They're excited about the Billion Torchbearer aggregation to explore and protect the ocean. Um, they, that was one of the main things that drew them to us to partner because again we're looking at scale. As soon as we can get scaling the better because of the timelines involved here. Ten years is a long time but it's a short time too and the, the issues are urgent. So combining together bringing audiences together, aggregating these torchbearers to do good works is really what it's all about. Um, 
So they're going to work with us in marine protected areas and many other uh, areas as well. And we're working through that uh, as we speak here with you today. And we're also looking at what divers and torchbearers can do in terms of turning that hope into action. Uh, I mentioned find some sort of balance for carbon offset in the dive industry. Well, that, that's as complicated and as simple as uh, replantations of mangroves that divers can do or seagrass replantations. There's a lot of different things that we can do through diver action, citizen science, working together underneath a legitimate science framework that can roll up and maybe even affect policy and offset that are fun to do too, that you can offer through your mission hubs. Uh, we'll speak more about mission hubs in a second, but that's a commitment that you get to make if you choose to want to be a mission hub, I hope you do, to help fulfill our mission, our vision for the future, to invite people in and uh, provide those opportunities for these people, these billion torchbearers through your thresholds. Well, that's great, Drew. And once again, uh, we have an opportunity to hear directly from uh, Paul and Christina. So let's have a quick listen. We're going to be creating year-long programs and stories with the goal of protecting our oceans while elevating the voices of local communities. We look forward to working together for the creation and the better management of marine protected areas. This will lead to increased biodiversity and more resilience against climate change. There is an urgent need for the creation of MPAs around the world, and we invite you as the dive community to join us in this effort. Wow, they are truly inspiring, aren't they? Yeah, oh absolutely. my goodness. That's, a, that's very interesting to see just the passion for you know, the ocean conservation and our torchbearer mission just really shines through. So I wanna shift gears a little bit into coral reefs you mentioned as part of Patty's blueprint for ocean action and talk a little bit about our partnership uh, with Ocean Shot and in fact, one of the board members of the Patty Aware Foundation, Dr. Deborah Bronson. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Drew? Absolutely. So we're pleased to partner with Dr. Bronson and her crew. Um, She's a global scientist for coral. She, as Kristen mentioned, she's on the board of directors for the Patty Ware Foundation. Um, she's found the right mix between divers, citizen science, uh, private business, government to do a really interesting project that we hope uh, you can get involved with that when we demonstrate that it actually works, we can scale that and export that to other places around the world. Now that said, many of you are involved with local coral nurseries and husbandry and all the rest, which is noble, and that's great. What we're trying to do is figure out a way to synthesize these things so we can scale them sooner than later and try to slow down some of the stressors that are on coral reefs. And Dr. Bronson's the, really the key influencer on that one right now in terms of partnering. So this project that uh, she and her crew have going on is to put aside several hectares of ocean floor and repopulate it with a vibrant coral reef. Uh, it's going to take a lot of uh, monitoring there, it's going to take a lot of support from the people that she's gathered, and it's going to take a lot of uh, diver involvement as well. So, um, and she couldn't be happier and more enthusiastic about the interface and this uh, with our Billion Torchbearer message, which resonates with her, and actually doing something so that people of all ages, particularly young people, recognize that there is hope to help preserve uh, a better balance for humanity in the ocean in this, in this framework under coral reefs. Thank you, Drew. And once again, we get the opportunity to hear directly from uh, Dr. Bronson. Hi, everyone. I'm Deborah Brosnan, a marine scientist, a diver, and a proud member of Paddy Aware Board of Directors. Now, we all know that without healthy oceans, we have no planet. But to keep our oceans healthy and beautiful, we must all work together. Divers have a critical role to play. We are passionate about the ocean and we get to know it more than most. That's why I'm proud to partner with Paddy Aware on their campaigns, including their Coral Reef program. This program is going to transform diving and will help keep beautiful coral sites alive and thriving. Just this year, I partnered with Paddy Aware to launch Ocean Shot an ambitious program to recover corals in the Caribbean. Divers, thank you for all that you do. Support Paddy Aware. Join with us as we build an ocean tribe. Let's all work together for our seas. I hope to see you soon underwater. 
Wow, that is really great from uh, from Deborah, isn't it? Absolutely. You can tell her passion for uh, the project and just really using divers to actually uh, scale the project to really increase uh, our coral reef protection and restoration. Very exciting. All of these partners really are so exciting to further Patty's blueprint for ocean action. Now we're talking about scale. We're talking about you know making real global impact, but honestly, a lot of that starts at the local level, right? The local action and with our members. And Drew, you've talked a little bit uh, so far tonight about uh, mission hubs, this concept of using our dive centers, our resorts, our individual instructors as mission hubs. Can you maybe explore that a little bit with a PADI membership? I'd be happy to, and it involves all of you. Um, there's a choice to be made. We hope that you'll want to be elevated as a mission hub under the PADI umbrella. And if you believe in our mission, and if you believe in the vision for balancing humanity in the ocean, if you believe in those three pillars, and you believe in our five buckets on an ocean blueprint, then we would like nothing more than to direct people for uh, action at your facility as a mission hub. So it's a choice to get involved. It's a choice to express to the world what you're passionate about. I mentioned scale. If we can get all 6,600 paddy dive centers and resorts across the planet in the program as a mission hub, then we can scale more quickly than if we didn't have that number. And that's what attracts partners, as I mentioned before. They, they love the fact that we have people on the ground in 180 some odd countries uh, working with local communities and also entertaining tourism. Um, and we can execute through that and scale in the next 10 years, really important time. So, Think about the blueprint, think about what you're passionate about, think about what you might offer. Maybe that's seagrass replantation on a local level if that's what you're into, or whatever it is that goes into one of these blueprints. And let's think more deeply about how we can aggregate those billion torchbearers across the planet uh, to do something good for the ocean as they explore it. Thanks, Drew. That is, that's so great and hopefully inspiring to all of you uh, as our PADI membership out there wanting to become mission hubs. And wanted to also share with you that through the PADI Aware Foundation, we actually have mission hub grants, community grant program, where we're allocating funds so that our members can apply for funding to help in some of those projects that you're doing that really help uh, to inspire others, to get people involved, as Drew just talked about, um, in that uh, pursuit of conserving the ocean and, uh, and, and really all that we're doing there in that blueprint for ocean action. So uh, excited about that. Now, community grants, that actually brings up a whole uh, concept of the third pillar that we talked about. Um, Drew, at the beginning here, you talked about our two kind of ocean conservation pillars and then that third pillar of people and humanity. Can you talk to us a little bit about what does people and humanity as a pillar really mean to Patty, the organization, and you? Yeah, okay. So there's something to be really proud about and celebrate here as part of the Patty diaspora that I mentioned early on in our discussion. Um, this third pillar, people and humanity, celebrates one, our global diversity. If you look at Patty through uh, the lens of a global uh, network of employees, pros, dive centers, resorts, and divers, we are the most diverse community that the diving industry or the diving space has ever seen, this planet has ever seen. Any way you want to cut that, demographically, culturally, however you want to cut that, we are the most diverse on that lens. What an amazing infrastructure. So we want to celebrate that and we, we want to further our efforts of inclusion. Um, anything from adaptive training and access for all, Recently, we had Brian Anderson involved in some shoot. There's an inspiring story of a, a person who doesn't let anything get in his way. He's all about the hope and positivity that we proclaim. Um, so that's one example. And there are so many other examples in terms of inclusion. Um, it's bigger than ourselves, but what a great platform we have to celebrate and to build off of on this global community, this diaspora of Patty across the planet. I want you to see this video and see me doing this and realize that maybe you can do it.
Some things I had to do multiple times, but I got through it. And I learned each time from every failure. Failure's not a bad thing. You learn from those things to help you the next time you try to do it. And through those trials and tribulations, I was able to adapt and overcome. And we figured it out. And here I am sitting here as a certified diver. I'm Bob Kardash. I'm a retired Army Colonel with almost 35 years of both enlisted and officer of service. And I was Brian Anderson's battalion commander. In 2005, I was headed to do some training with the police officers. And on the way there, our convoy got hit with an IAD and ended up losing my left hand and both of my legs. A month after he was blown up, I was able to visit him in Walter Reed. He was inspiring the nurses and the doctors that were trying to take care of him. Today, he's trying to inspire others, and I wanted to help him continue that trail of inspiration. By the fact of him doing this, it might inspire other disabled people to put on the tank and enjoy the, the undersea world. I still have things to work with and I have that willpower. When you accomplish something that you've been working on for a year or two and you finally finish, it's just like, wow. You always have that thing in the back of your head like, well, maybe you're not gonna get there. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe something will limit you. Well, wow. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to splash water, but that was actually really, really cool. Uh, I was, that was so cool. Like, much better time in the kelp this time than last time. And I felt like I was in control. For some reason, I just really liked being underwater. I got scuba certified. And to be honest, I went on an adventure. Got to see a whole new world. And it's kind of incredible. If you've ever thought about wanting to dive and you're stopping yourself because your mind is stopping you, you think you can't, I want to show you that you can. So we want to do more. We want to invite more because we need that million aggregation of like-minded people to take action to either support exploration, personally involve themselves in exploration, and everybody get involved with this ocean conservation mission and blueprint structure. That's really great, Drew. In a couple of those words that you mentioned, I think are so important to our audience is the diversity and inclusion in our sport. Uh, you mentioned adaptive, and that's certainly a really important form of inclusion in uh, our sport. Also, gender. Uh, I think everybody out there knows, you know, for the past seven years, we've been focusing on the gender balance and trying to inspire more women through our women in diving uh, commitment and, and uh, women's diving dive day and things like that. Um, the work is, you know, only just begun, right, in this category. We have a lot of work to do uh, to really celebrate our diversity and also inspire more people to get into the sport. So, yeah, yeah very exciting. The water doesn't care who you are, where you come from, or what do you do. We are all equal underwater and we all speak one language. It doesn't care about your age or your sexuality or your race or your religion or what your physical or mental disabilities might be. 
it doesn't mind at all, so why should diving? So we really need all kinds of people to get inside the sea and, and to feel it. It's super essential to bring to light to everyone that we are a part of this planet, that this ocean is ours. And once people get to experience the ocean, it changes everything around how they've always looked at it. It begins to also feel like home, a place that they will always protect. Uh, maybe just transitioning then a little bit, when we think about community and all of the PADI members here that are watching, can you talk to us, Drew, a little bit about how our PADI membership have inspired us in this last year through these stories of hope rising and uh, the PADI people that are out there doing really wonderful work? Yeah, we're proud of that. We're proud to be in a position to be able to see all the great stories. We, we try to share them in a rolling fashion through our social channels, etc. In fact, last year we had a, a, uh, several vignettes. I think we shared 25 case studies of uh, some of your brothers and sisters doing amazing things. And that's a story of resiliency. Uh, resiliency in the middle of a pandemic. The world, our world, in our lifetime, we've never faced anything like this before. We're working through it. <clears throat> it's been difficult for, everybody's been touched some way. Difficult uh, for everybody and really difficult for some. And so the, the whole idea there is to use those strengths of soldiering through with the resilience and diversity and come out of the other end of this thing, which we're nearing, um, with a new focus, a recharged approach to the planet, and decide what's important to us. We all love ex exploration. We love inviting people into that passion of ours. The ocean called us all at an early age. Uh, it will call others still. And that part of that call will be to care for it and the needs have never been greater and on the the end of something as devastating as a global pandemic there's no better time to leverage what's important to all of us and see what we can do together as a community that maybe wasn't really as possible pre-pandemic so from that point of view i think we have a, an amazing opportunity that's been given to us through this this time period you're absolutely right. It's been so inspiring to see the stories of PADI people around the globe and just what they've been able to accomplish. I know we've been running some of them on the screen behind us, yeah. and uh, we also are going to share with you a QR code on the screen as well so that you can scan it and uh, learn more about the inspiring stories of PADI members just like you and hopefully gain inspiration and uh, maybe do something new and different in your everyday practice uh, by learning and, and you know, really pulling that inspiration. That's certainly been keeping us going as well. Drew talks about Stronger Together, and uh, we are just a community of very strong PADI members, and uh, it's, it's really amazing to see what everybody has been able to accomplish through this pandemic. So I encourage you to scan that QR code and uh, go read about those uh, PADI people and uh, the hope rising stories that are out there. <laughs> So Drew, I just have one final question for you. I'm sure a lot of the PADI membership are wondering what can they expect of PADI in the coming year? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I'd be happy to. Um, look, as you've seen the last 18 months or so, uh, the PADI team has trying to double down on supporting you, your business, your membership uh, across the planet. So we're gonna continue with webinars, marketing tools, um, Face on, we'll be getting out in the field more uh, when that's allowed through borders, et cetera, um, to come see you and run some of those seminars in the field and whatever. I'm really proud of our PADI team uh, across the planet. Uh, it's a very diverse group of passionate people who love diving, all the same things you do, and uh, really have focused on prioritizing you as a person and you as a member in the way that they frame up their work and their lives too. So it's an amazing group of people. So we're gonna focus on things that we can control, just like that example. Um, we're gonna be focusing on bringing in new customers and sending them to you. Uh, some of that is gonna be driven by ocean conservation. Some of that will be driven by just pure exploration, learn how to dive. Uh, we've got a brilliant educational system, training system, best in the world, uh, through your good hands, and we want more people to go through that. And also just billion torchbearers trying to reach that aspirational goal through audience build uh, through our partnerships, et cetera. So you're the center of it. This Mission Hub concept, your membership is really center to executing this thing for scaling. 
Um, so expect more of that. And we're going to elevate the Patty Job Board, which we've worked hard on to try to connect you with uh, jobs out there in the industry. Check it out if you haven't. It's completely different. And we have a lot of jobs on there now that are open and unfulfilled, and you might find your dream job. Or if you're looking to uh, post-pandemic do something different with yourself in the dive space, look to us to try to enable that. We're, we're proud of that, and we want to see that grow and grow. And that's a big priority to get people back to work. Um, and also, more on this mission, more good for the ocean, uh, doing well by doing good. This is good for uh, your business as well as a dive professional. Um, there's a big market out there of people that are enthusiastic uh, to feel hopeful and to take that hopefulness into action through Patty and through your good hands. So we couldn't be prouder to look forward into the future. We're going to focus on those things quite deeply. Um, we're going to be sending people to you using our strengths. And also, we're going to leverage our media strength, not only within the dive industry, but also external. Between our media and public relations, we're getting billions of impressions out there right now. Uh, Non-endemic, in other words, some of that is are people who aren't in the dive space, but we try to attract them to explore their dreams. And the call to action is always, go see a patty professional. Go see a patty retailer. Go see a patty resort operator for fulfillment, for engagement. And we will continue that. We're different. Uh, as a value proposition uh, from a membership organization, we are different um, than other stakeholders in this business. We're proud of that. We're different through your diversity and your passion. Uh, and we just want to look forward with you to try to make a, a big difference after quite an austere period in life for the last 18 months for this whole planet. And we, we want to make a difference knowing there are problems, but looking for hopeful positivity in our solutioning through your good works. And just want to thank you for uh, subscribing to those beliefs and hopefully you'll turn the corner and becoming a mission hub yourselves. Thank you, Drew. That sure is a lot to look forward to as we uh, forge into 2022. And uh, it, it is really exciting. I know some of the things you just mentioned there in terms of really putting the members at the heart of the organization and everything we do drives back to Patty members. Uh, the billions of impressions that we drive Every, every month, every year. I think this year alone, we're gonna be north of 15 billion media impressions that we will actually uh, be able to look at audiences that you know see the Patty brand and Patty business, businesses, the dive shops, the resorts, the members that we're driving that back to. Uh, in fact, the members told us that in a recent survey that the number one thing we can do is truly to get more customers through the doors of our dive shops. And that's exactly what we're gonna invest in and do for the future, so really, wonderful words there. Uh, just want to thank the Patty membership and, uh, you know, and just all that you've done over this past year, certainly during the pandemic. Uh, but we all know that there are uh, better days ahead. And uh, just want to thank you for taking the time out today to sit with uh, myself and, and Drew. Thank you to you, Drew. Thanks, Kristen. And you as well. And, and to your members, uh, all of our members out there, thank you. Thanks for your passion, your dedication, your loyalty to Patty and your belief in the future we have together. This is a moment in time. This is an opportunity for us. It's an honor to serve for you and with you. And we couldn't be more enthusiastic about making a positive difference on this planet of ours. So thank you very much. And we look forward to crossing trails with you in the months ahead.